check the mic and make sure it sounds What's up everyone? Boy. Welcome to the group chat brought to you by Overmark. I'm your host Daryl and today with me I have Dylan. So Dylan, uh, maybe you can do a short introduction to viewers who are not familiar with you. Sure. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Dylan. I'm the founder of Paradigm. So for the last, uh, you know, two to five years, I have been uh, teaching students mathematics, but beyond that, uh, it's my passion to help my students to discover you know, their passion, their purpose, so that uh, beyond just doing great in academics, they really find out what they enjoy and they steer themselves towards making their dreams and passion a reality. Lah. I'm always so inspired to hear Dylan speak. I mean, uh, we actually got acquainted a while ago and then we were like, we had a great chat. I was like, Dylan, you have to come onto this podcast to speak with the students. But today, I'm trying to bring a lot of value to our listeners. We're actually going to talk about a topic that actually impacts many of us uh, on the academic front, uh, which is how do we reduce making careless mistakes? Now, um, Dylan will go more on the math side. I'll speak more from the science side. Uh, but I think careless mistake is something that we are all very... Um, affected by and you know when we reduce the amount of careless mistake we make we actually see that we can make so much like we can do so much better so maybe Dylan just to start off with you what are some of the most common careless mistake in math mm, there, are, there are many mistakes that we make uh, in math I can just throw up some random examples right from things like calculation error from things like uh, transferring the wrong number copying the wrong number Right, uh, and run the wrong units. There's really a ton of them. Uh, but if I were to summarize, uh, what I usually teach my students uh, is into four letters, which I call it a uh, C U T Q. Right, so I call it CUTQ. C U T Q. So C stands for calculation error. Uh, U stands for unit. T stands for transfer, and a uh, Q stands for question type. So these are the four things that uh, I summarize like for my students. Um, at least from my side for science, I find that one of the most common errors, I think there's a lot of overlapping because I mean, I do both chem and physics and there's also calculation. So calculation error is definitely one that we see to be very, very prevalent. But I'll say for science, uh, one of the bigger ones that I noticed, right, is that students just don't read the question. I think that's one very big pain point that I find because we are very used to, you know, just doing things fast. We want to scan through. We want to get down to business. But I realized that reading the question is such an underrated skill because a lot of the information that you need to get through the question or the clues towards solving the question are all present in the, the sentences itself. So I always make it a point that if you want to reduce careless mistakes, it's actually very important for you to read the question. Lah. So that is one area. Calculation is for sure another. Uh, units in physics is especially a big thing. And it's also quite underrated because in chemistry, there's also a lot of units uh, that needs to be taken care of uh, for things, uh, for calculation intensive chapters like more concept, right? Uh, a lot of this needs to be taken care of. Um, but yeah, I think most of us are familiar with the kind of careless mistakes we tend to make. Um, now, Dylan, um, for example, if we were to put things into perspective, for a student that completely eliminates all of their careless mistakes, right? How drastic of a shift of improvement would that be? They Would they be able to achieve? <laughs> uh, it really all depends, but you can see that uh, based on my experience, right, there are students making mistakes, uh, especially in, you know, like WA's test, right, it's a point 20, a point 30. So every mark is constitute a grade. So if 15, a point 20, right, versus like 12, a point 30, you can see there's a huge drop of uh, results already. So, um, you know, if we are able to eliminate and avoid those careless mistakes, I think it will help a lot uh, in improving your final results ultimately. Mm, totally agree. I mean, my, my students just came back with their WA um, in term one and really the difference whether they get A or B uh, or C uh, is really about the careless. Yeah. Because the general level of understanding is there. It's just whether they caught on to the smaller parts um, that were a bit more tricky, things that they should look out for. So one of the things um, that I think we can discuss next, I think that most students are interested in, is how do we actually reduce the careless mistakes? So Dylan, you can start off from the math front, what uh, you personally um, would tell your students to do or what to look out for. And then mm. I can also share my perspective from the science side. Mm, sure. So I think to kickstart this uh, discussion is to acknowledge that all of us will make careless mistakes, right? And uh, oftentimes in school or maybe in teachers, uh, I think... Growing up, um, you know, the usual comment is like, ah, yeah, you should have checked your work, you should be more careful, why are you so careless? But I think this doesn't really solve the issue uh, that students are facing. And that was how I felt when I was a student, right? Every time I got back, you know, results that, uh, 
that I was disappointed with, right? Teachers or my parents would just say, ah, yeah, you can be more careful, but no one really prescribed to me any solution. So uh, I started to sit down and ask myself, how can I be more careful, right? I sort of devised a few strategies along the way, and I think this could be beneficial to uh, everyone listening. So number one, uh, what I noticed to be very helpful is to s compile your careless mistake that you're making on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Because, you know, you know, uh, in class, in our practices, we know that these are careless mistakes, but we don't actually write it down. So before the exam, uh, we have nothing to refer to. And because of that, uh, all these careless mistakes uh, tend to be forgotten. And it's only, you know, uh, we only look at it again or when we go back our results. And that's kind of too late, right? So something I always teach my students is number one is to... Uh, Go and collate and compile all the mistakes that you have made before uh, in the area of carelessness. And so that before you walk into the exam hall, you can you know, do a quick look on it and uh, it stays fresh in your head. So there's a higher chance for you to eliminate these mistakes uh, once and for all. So this is uh, one important way. Yeah, maybe Daryl, you can share a bit more then uh, I can add on a few as well. Sure. Um, there's this thing I tell my students. Uh, also, all my students will, will know that I will tell this to them. I'll say that there's no careless mistakes. Okay, wow. But it's like a bit contradict what Dylan say. Uh. So what I tell them exactly is this. So when I'm going through a question, like when we're going through a content and uh, specific questions that we do, I always make it a point to explain to them what are the most common mistakes that students tend to make. So I'll call this the teacher's perspective. So I always tell my students there are layers to it, like how well you actually know your content. It starts off with very basic content mastery, meaning you know your stuff, right? I, I know exactly... Uh, what is endothermic, what's exothermic, uh, what are my Newton's tree law. The next level comes with a bit of mastery, meaning you need to be able to solve questions with that knowledge. And the level on top of that, I would say, is the highest level, which is from a teacher's perspective. So if you're able to teach somebody else that content, it really means you fully internalize the idea and the concepts. So whenever I get them to learn a new chapter, I don't stop at like getting them to do what they're supposed to do as a student. I'll try to further value add by asking them a very simple question. Where do you think is the most common mistake that other people will be making, right? So by getting yourself to go into that frame of mind of instead just doing the question, but to actually have a second perspective of like, okay, if I look at this from a teacher's perspective, where are the areas that I suspect most people will be making mistakes? If you can start developing that perspective, it makes it very unlikely for you to be making those mistakes yourself. So some of the things that you already know you might be making mistakes is, for example, in physics, when we do a unit conversion, a lot of people forget to convert minutes to seconds when they're calculating power or anything related to a per unit time basis. So every time when we do the question, I will highlight the minutes, like 30 minutes, then I'll highlight. Then I was like, what's the most common mistake most people will make here? And I'll even show them the choice, the MCQ choice that other students will end up getting. So I think if you can slowly start developing a bit of that teacher's perspective, it will go a long, long way to try to reduce the amount of pitfalls that you fall into. And it's only attainable if you have a very strong level of understanding. But if you're aiming for A1 or A2, I would say very easily you need to be teetering quite close to that level of a teacher's perspective. So um, that, that would be my one big tip. So I think something that you can potentially think about as you're doing practices as well. Uh, Dylan, what about for you? Mm, so, uh, I think it's very similar, and I just want to add on to a point that uh, as students, I know most of you know the term active recalling, right? So, whereby we sit down and start actively recalling our entire concepts, formulas, definition, terminologies, right? That applies for science, uh, applies to science as well. But something that we don't active recall is to active recall our mistakes, right? So, uh, this is something that I encourage all of you listeners uh, to try out, whereby if, let's say, you know, both in math and science context, right? Before you enter the exam, sit down, close your eyes, and start thinking, okay, in this particular chapter, what are the mistakes that I tend to make or I will make, right? So you start to re active record right, and just say out everything, right? Perhaps this is the definition, this is the formulas that I forget, this is the common mistakes. So just start, uh, you know, mumbling out to yourself or even writing now, depending on your studying style. And that will help you a lot, um, as I mentioned, right, to stay, ensure that the things stays fresh in your head. Right, so that's on Daryl's point. Uh, another technique that I can encourage something you to do, which is that a lot of times in the exam, no one really teaches us how to check our work, right? Because they just say, I you know, remaining time, 20 minutes, I just go and check. But no one really sit down and, and, and teach you what should you do in the 20 minutes, right? Should we just look line by line? Should I check the calculation? What, what should I do? So ultimately, uh, I really encourage all of us, right? Start pondering about that question. If let's say you have 20 minutes left, 
what is the process to follow? What's the framework and strategy that uh, you can adopt so that uh, you're not just randomly looking at question line by line or just jumping from one to another, right? Without uh, any clue in, in your head. Uh, with a strategy, I think that will help you uh, in checking your mistake uh, and avoiding those mistakes at the end of the day. Just to add on to that point a little, um, this is more for physics than for chem. Uh, for my students in my class, they already know this, but uh, when there's usually more than one way of solving the question, I'll usually teach them. So in some very extreme cases, there might even be three ways to solve a circuit question in DC circuits. So I'll let them know of the different variations uh, to get them to decide which is their preferred choice of method and the backup method for checking. So I completely agree that during the checking phase, there are specific things you should be checking for. In physics, I would say it's like the SI unit, uh, checking for your units, uh, whether you take note of your prefixes and stuff. So it's good to have sort of like a checklist like what Dylan has mentioned, like you know what you're checking for instead of just blindly checking. It makes a huge difference. And I think all of that comes from, in the first place, accumulating that uh, careless mistake bin that Dylan was mentioning earlier to know what are some of the most common careless mistakes that you have been making. By knowing what these mistakes are, you can actually develop a mini strategy to do exactly that, uh, to check for those uh, mistakes that you tend to make in the exam. So I think that will make a huge difference uh, the moment you try it. Um, another way that I'll say you can reduce careless mistakes, this one might sound a little controversial, huh? but I think it's important to do your paper efficiently, to leave enough time for you to check. And when I say efficiently, it's not to rush through your paper, but it's actually to design um, and allocate time strategically um, to portions of the paper and to complete it within the allocated amount of time while leaving enough time for you to check. Now, I'll say this is more closer towards exam strategy instead of a day-to-day -day basis or WA even. But when you are given a paper, you know exactly how long and how much time you have. So time here is like a resource. And if you have more time, for students who are sleeping after you're done, you finish your paper, please don't do that, okay? You'll never get to go back into the exam hall again. That 10 minutes that you're sleeping, you can go home and sleep, okay? So if you're in the exam hall, please check, okay? And if you check already, check again, okay? There's no harm to it. But um, what I'm talking about is about allocating time to make sure that you can check through and to make sure that you don't make mistakes. So it's about not doing your paper too fast or too slow as well. I think that is one of the things that we don't really take into account when we are talking about carelessness. So usually when it comes to a certain part of the paper, uh, I'll tell my students exactly how much time they should be allocating to it. So they know how slow or how fast they can go. But all of this uh, will come a bit better with actual time practices uh, that you're doing in school or by yourself to make sure that you're comfortable with the time strategy that you set up so that doing too fast or too slow, you can reach an optimal point whereby you can still read the question carefully, you can still do your calculation carefully while reserving enough time at the end of the exam to check for your paper. I think that's something pretty underrated. So there isn't a very fixed exam strategy, but in general, uh, you need to plan that up before you enter the exam hall. Inside the exam hall, no time ready. So you can use your prelim or any uh, exam, mock exams that your school have, or even a self-administered one to try for that. But I'll only encourage uh, these time practices only after you complete your content and you start attempting more papers. So don't just do it. Uh, you want to do it in a time setting. I think that is one of the key difference and in terms of managing your time to reduce carelessness. Um, Dylan, any more golden tips for our students? <clears throat> uh, yes, I think we can round off with one final one, uh, which is the most powerful strategy that I teach uh, my students. Uh, and a lot of times we just call it checking. And I often say that checking is a very weak uh, level because checking means you don't know whether the answer is correct. I just check my it can be wrong, it can be correct. Uh, but a word that I use uh, oftenly uh, in the community and the things that I share with my students is the word uh, validation. So when I say I, the question has been validated, uh, my answer has been validated, means that this answer is 100% correct, right? Checking is like, you know, 50-50 can be wrong, can be correct, I don't know. But when I say that the answer is validated, means 100% plus chop, the answer is correct. So um, a lot of the questions, especially in mathematics, uh, can be validated, uh, especially if you substitute your solutions back into the original equation. And uh, this can be really useful. So uh, I always tell my students that uh, when they walk out of the exam hall, they should kind of know their grades already, right? Because if they kind of, know the entire strategy to validate their solutions and of course, uh, you know, to check their work. Ultimately, they kind of know that, okay, I have scored a bare minimum of like 75%. And then immediately, they can just walk out of the exam hall. Hey, did you learn? Did you learn? Right? Confirm get A already. Confirm get A. Right? Because you won't go below that, that 
75 percent because the baseline of 75 percent has been validated so that is something very powerful and encourage uh, all of you right to just sit down right and, and test it out right especially a lot of chapters from exponential algebra trigo logarithm everything can be validated so hurry up yeah I, I think that that was pretty comprehensive if i just add one more this one is really not about how to reduce your careless mistake uh, but it's really about you need to understand that you can only check assuming you got the correct answer you get what i mean so if you haven't ever mastered your content right it's just a straight up you do not know how to do rather than a careless so we are talking about more of like a, at an advanced level where you pretty much have everything set and right now you're struggling to get the A1 but you're constantly making too many mistakes that are setting you back. Um, but if you are currently still struggling, I would say just purely focus on getting your content up, right? Get your concepts right, make sure you know your stuff. Then from there, once you attain a certain level of mastery, then you'll be pushing to reduce as much carelessness, carelessness as possible. So I think between me and Dylan today, we shared a lot of things for you all to be thinking about uh, in terms of how to reduce your carelessness. Uh, and I think carelessness is something that really kills a lot of us. And it's the most painful kind of marks to drop because it's like you know how to do it, but then you fail to achieve and attain that point. So it's very it's a very big pity, especially if you find yourself constantly falling into that. So you really need to spend a bit of time to reconfigure what's your strategy, right? Are you going to validate uh, are you going to start accumulating all of your mistakes and figuring out a strategy on how to check? Um, or are you going to have a time management strategy in place to make sure that in the exam hall, you are never too fast or too slow? I think those are all things that you can put together and find out what works best for you. Uh, Dylan, maybe a last shout out for um, students out there who are struggling with carelessness. <laughs> so I think we have shared a lot of golden nuggets throughout this entire episode. So please, right, uh, you know, re-listen and rewatch this entire episode again. Uh, but I think on a final count, uh, that is not related to just checking. I think uh, sleep is something very important, right? Because uh, you know, this is something that we didn't talk about this episode. But uh, I remember when sometimes I burn the midnight oil, right? Slept like three to four a.m. and then the next day my brain just can't function. <laughs> like yes, I can all these strategies, right? But my brain is just working too slowly to process, and definitely will miss out a lot of information, right? So uh, sleep is very important. Uh, so manage your time well so that leading up to the exam, the day before you should be more or less prepared so you can have an early rest. And then when you go for the exam, you're very fresh, you're confident, and you're ready to you know ace your exams. Yeah, man, confidence is everything. But please don't check until a point where you start doubting yourself. <laughs> That's another very scary thing. Okay, but um, really hope that uh, whatever we have shared today was beneficial for you and to help you guys make less careless mistakes. So thank you, Dylan, a lot for coming on to this podcast. I'm sure our listeners appreciate it as well. Uh, so for those of you who are watching on YouTube, please subscribe and um, give us a like as we'll be posting more content in the future. And maybe Dylan, uh, just a quick shout out. Um, we like to share about um, what's going on with Paradigm and any exciting stuff, stuff upcoming that students can look forward to. <laughs> so well, today is uh, the March holidays. So tomorrow I'm organizing a crash course. I think it's going to be too late before the episode is released. But uh, we organize a lot of events, webinars, and uh, lots of resources and advice thrown around on a day-to-day -day basis like, on our community and social media. So if you'd like to see more, right, just follow our channel in the Telegram, in Instagram, and on TikTok. Yeah, man, uh, I think um, Dylan has been doing a great job as well. So so do give his uh, channel a check, a check. I mean, they do pump up tons of resources. I think it's just for everybody out there to benefit as a community. So um, really thankful for what you're doing uh, to help students as well. And I think um, with that, we come to the end of today's episode. So um, um, hopefully we can invite Dylan back on again as a guest in the future. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. <laughs> Okay, thanks a lot, Dylan. Bye, everyone. Okay, take care. See ya. It sound right, boy.